Hello everybody, it's Susie from the Frazzle Flamingo and today I'm going to show you how to glitter a cup um, from beginning to end using the Crystal Lac products. And there are some things you're going to need. You're going to need a prep cup. And if you do not know how to prep a cup, then just stop this video, go down to the bottom and watch our video on how to prep a cup and then come back and you'll be right where we are. So you're going to need a prepped cup. Um, this one is a sprayed ombre cup and I'll show you that in a later tutorial. You're going to need uh, your glitter and this is White Walker glitter and we have this on our website. It's beautiful, beautiful glitter. You're going to need your Mod Podge. You're going to need your E6000 um, gloves. Um, this is a brush we use to put the product on after it's gotten smooth. So if you don't have one of these, you can get these right on Amazon. You need a drying rack. These are just paper towel racks that you pick up at the Dollar Tree. You want to get yourself, um, oh my gosh, parchment paper. <laughs> parchment paper. I like these pre-folded ones, but you can use any and just cut it. This helps so your glitter, you can save every little bit of glitter. And these little trays are at the Dollar Tree, very simple, and you're gonna need a mask. I, I believe in wearing a mask when you're doing, um, when you're doing a glitter, because those particles, those dust particles can get in your lungs. All right, let's get started. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put our Mod Podge in a container. And this is what I like to use. I find it to be easiest, but I add just a little bit of E6000 in it, give it a little more, I don't know, tackiness. It works for me. Uh, just take a popsicle stick and stir it up as good as you can. It kind of waters it down a little bit too, so it's not as thick. I think it helps it just a little. All right. Now we're gonna we're gonna put our gloves on. These gloves are a little scarce these days, aren't they? Oh my gosh, it's terrible. All right, and oh, the other things you will need to have is your Bright Tone and your Extreme Protection. These are Crystalac products. We won't need them right away, but we'll get started with our glitter. I'm gonna go ahead and put my mask on. Okay, and I'm gonna go ahead while I'm here, and I, I have some of my glitter in a bag. I have them in here, but I'm gonna use my, I wanna use my extra bag up. So. All right. <clears throat> We're just gonna set that off to the side. Get our brush. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to start applying our Mod Podge. And you want a pretty good coat. Um, I normally put it on pretty good and I go back and I'll take some of it off. Because you're going to want to um, smooth it out as best you can because you don't want a lot of lumps and bumps. Don't forget the butt. Make sure you get in all these creases. You're going to want that. Go along your edges. I do tape off my cups. You'll see that in how to prep a cup tutorial. And any of these products that I'm using, they will be linked in the bottom. So you will be able to know exactly what I'm using and where you can get them. Most of our products you can find on our website at the frazzleflamingo.com. And we hope you've joined us on our Facebook group page so we can have you can have fun. 
All right, I got it on there. You want to make sure you do this and before it dries real good. You don't want to it doesn't work real good if it dries. Okay, so there we have it. We're just trying to smooth it out a little. It don't have to be super neat, but you want to make sure you got as much of the lumps off in this as you can do. All right. All right, move that aside. And we're going to start glittering. Now this is just one glitter. I will show you how to do an ombre, ombre glitter um, at another time. This is kind of like a cheat. Um, it's an iridescent glitter that allows you to, uh, to kind of cheat a little bit. It'll show a little bit of that yellow through there. We just want to cover it as l just lightly. Get it covered along all these edges. And what I like about these is you can one handed, sorry, you can one handed pour that back into the cup. You're not really wasting much. pretty I know it does not show on cameras or you know as beautiful as it does in person so make sure you you cover the butt and you can just just tap it off tap off the excess make sure you got it there's any spots you need to kind of put down a little bit tap it off and see see how your your spray paint shows the ombre through this it's it's a cheat they call it a cheat and we're gonna just I gotta get this edge that edge isn't looking like I want it there we go there we go and when you mush these It'll, there we go. You can kind of pat down some of it there. So now what you do, this is where this comes in handy. You just stick it right there, gets it off your hand. Gets it off your hand, we're gonna set it to the side. Now what we're gonna do next is we gotta let it dry. And we're gonna let it dry I'd say for an hour and then we're going to come back and I'm going to show you we're going to either you can either spray or paint on your E6000 and um, so when we come back we'll do that part see you in a minute okay hey y'all we are back it's been about um, I'd say a couple hours so the cup should be dry and now what we want to do is we want to seal this on here. We want to make sure that this is going to stay on because it will come off. I don't know if you can see that. Um, so we want to make sure that we're sealing this. And uh, a lot of people do it a lot of different ways. You can use a spray sealer. Um, you can use the Rust-Oleum 2X spray sealer or the Krylon. Um, I prefer E6000. You can, um, there's several different ways to apply this. Um, you can spray it on. You can just spray away like this, um, which is fine. But you can also pour some of this in a cup. And you can brush it on. And... I don't know if you can see that but it, it it gives it a milky look it dries clear but I'll tell you once it's dry it's dry it's gonna stay on anything you put on this is gonna stay on I lightly brush this on when I do it this way I lightly do it because I don't want to brush off the glitter I just worked hard to put on so I pat it on it's a little messy but I, I will tell you that once 
this is dry, your glitter is not going anywhere. And it was a game changer for me to find E6000 to begin with. Um, I used to use the Krylon and then I went to the Rust-Oleum and um, spray and I'd, I'd go outside and spray it and it'd have to gas off um, for a longer period of time. When you use Crystal Act, you have to gas it off from all the chemicals and the gases and everything that it has on it before you can begin to use your bright tone or your um, E6000. So this, you're just gonna brush it on just like, see how it's going? And it does make it have a milky look, but it will, I promise you, it will dry clear and the glitter that you applied will not go anywhere. At this point, you can uh, put on a second coat if you desire. Um, once you get this on, you can sprinkle a second coat and let it dry and then seal that again. A lot of times though, if you prep your cut properly and you paint it, um, normally you don't need two coats of glitter. The more coats of glitter you put on, the more product you're going to need. Um, glitter absorbs product. All right, so this is gonna drip probably a little bit. Um, I mean, you could put it on your turner. I just put it on my drying rack right here. And I just leave it, make sure there are towels down and leave it and that's it. Now, when we come back, we're gonna smush it and we're gonna make sure that glitter is smushed to the cup real good and then we can begin to apply our BT. So I'll see you in about an hour. Hello everybody, we're back. And this has been drying for a little while. I did have to go in and put a second coat of glitter because I did, I bumped a couple spots and needed to fill it. So I went ahead and did that and I resprayed it with E6000. Then I went in and smushed. And how you smush is, you put it on your, it's on your drying rack. You can use your gloved hands and move your cup around and just squeeze it. Just squeeze the glitter just gently. You don't want to get over anxious. You want to make sure you squeeze the butt of it and the edges. And you're just going to smush it. That's what smushing is. You're just going to smush it. Or you can use a piece of uh, plastic because sometimes your gloves, the crinkles of your gloves can leave marks on your cup. So you can use this and just go along and smush your, your glitter down. And it's, it's on there pretty good. So our next step now is you can use bright tones through the whole process, you can use it. Um, but I, I use EP because it's a little cheaper and it helps kind of fill it um, a little little less expensive and then I finish off my last you know four or five coats with my bright tone I know it seems like a lot but it's actually not so um, if you're wondering what EP it's extreme protection this is what the it looks like and or well let's do it like I don't know which way is better for you to look at it this way or this way <laughs> but it's extreme protectant and that's what I'm starting off with. And I put them, we put them in these little condiment bottles because it makes it a lot easier. You can also, if you want to, you can, you can put it on with one of these brushes and the, you will need brushes like this. Now, I don't use these unless I'm working on a smoother surface or until my glitter gets smooth. I also do not agree with those that use their bare fingers, bare hands, to touch chemicals. I just, you know, this is a chemical at the end of the day, it's a chemical. And um, your skin is sensitive and I think you need to protect your skin. And just like if you're using epoxy, you need to wear your PPE, wear your respirator mask, have it well ventilated, have it in an area outside of your home. You don't have to do that with Crystal Lac, thank goodness, but you do need to use caution whenever you're using any new products and I believe in wearing your PPE. Now if I'm sanding 
this product or I'm spray, spraying this product or spray painting or glittering, I wear a mask. I wear gloves when, so I'm not touching these chemicals onto my hands. I have sensitive skin and I don't want to break out. So with that being said, I'm going to put on what's called a flood coat. And we're going to, you turn your, your turner on. Give it a minute to start turning. Move that out a little bit. Can you see it? Let me scooch it. There we go. These little mats, they're actually grilling Teflon mats. They are awesome. It, they clean off, it wipes, your product wipes right off in it. They're great. Okay, so what I do is I'm gonna put a, what it's called a flood coat. I'm gonna put a thicker coat than what they say to put, but I'm also gonna let it dry. My first one, I will let it dry overnight. And then I'll put another flood coat on it in the morning and I'll wait probably six hours to do another flood coat and that'll give me three coats and then from there I'll determine if it's time for me to sand or um, or not so and that I'll show you I'll be showing you as we go so this is all you do you put a strip down and you're gonna you're gonna put a rather thick layer and you're going to try and make sure it gets everywhere. You want to go all the way around. Now this is a slow turner. Um, I do have faster ones, but when I'm first putting on uh, this, I kind of like my slow turner. It gives me a little bit of time. And you're going to make a mess, I do. If you don't, then you're doing it better than me. All right, so kind of hard to put it on the, get it all on the butt. All right, so we're gonna go back over it. We're gonna make sure everything is covered. I'm putting a very thick coat on here. And this is what they call flood coat. When they say a flood coat, it's a little, it's thicker than what normally is recommended. And it's okay if you put a flood coat on as long as you allow it to dry. It'll have to dry longer than the three, four hours if you put a thin coat on. And you can feel with your glove. I don't know why people insist on, oh, I need my bare hand. I don't agree with that. I think um, a gloved finger works just fine. If you don't like the full gloves, they do sell those that just slip on the one finger and then you can use it. I am a safety girl and watching some of these other groups, I, I am glad that there are those out there that teach extreme safety with epoxy and I'm very proud of them. I think it's, it's hard to do right now with people doing what they do, but we got this coronavirus going on right now and it affects your lungs. So if your lungs are weak and your lungs are having an issue, then <laughs> you're not gonna do well with a virus that attacks your lungs if your lungs are compromised and weak. So let's practice safety so that we all keep our lungs good. Now the thing with this is it does self um, level. So you want this to turn, this will turn on here until it's tacky until it's dry enough that it's tacky but it, it this will turn for probably 45 minutes maybe even an hour because I put on such a, a thick coat and you're just you're just gonna let it turn and turn and I will be back tomorrow to show you how to do another flood coat I'll see you in a little while Hello everybody, we're back again. And this has dried overnight. And we're gonna put another coat on it. It's, it's very rough, as you can see. And that's how it's supposed to be. I know it looks like, oh my gosh, what did I just do? But it's gonna take a few coats. You're putting on a lot thinner coats than you do epoxy. 
and it just takes patience and time and you'll get the hang of it and you'll love this product and okay we're going to do another flood coat so we're going to put it on here turn on your turner remember we're using ep extreme protection right now we're going to put another flood coat on and i got my gloves on and we're just drizzling it on and spreading it all over this cut i'm putting on a little thicker coat um, than what you normally would because um, the glitter absorbs a lot of product. So if I put a flood coat on, then it takes a lot less. And I do this only until um, I get to the point where I'm going to sand it just before I put my bright tones on. And I will show you all that. I know it sounds confusing, but after you do it a while, it's 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 not you just make sure you cover it make sure you get all your edges and then you're gonna you're gonna try and smooth it so it's not so clumpy it will self level and don't forget to get the butt. Don't forget to get the butt. Make sure you're covering that. Put a good amount on it. Okay, and then what you're going to do is you're going to let this turn until... And when I say tacky, I mean pretty much dry. It might have a little bit of tacky spots, but it's just about all dry. You want to make sure it is finished self-leveling and it's not going to drip. And then you can put this on your drying rack. So we're going to let this turn. It'll have to turn for about, I'd say, 40 minutes. And then you can put it on your drying rack and you're going to leave it on your drying rack longer normally it would be three to four hours but because we did a flood coat we're going to let this dry for about five to six and make sure it's really dry before you do another flood coat and so i will um, probably be putting on another um, couple coats and i'm going to come back to you when it's time to sand hello everybody we are back okay we have five coats of the um, extreme protection on this. I don't know if you can see it. See, it's bumpy. However, it's not um, as bumpy as it was. It's You have some smoothness to it. Now it's time to, we're going to sand it, and then we're going to start with the BT, the bright tones. And I'm going to show you how I do that. And what you're going to need for sanding but you're going to need some 400 grit sandpaper. Of course, a mask. Anytime you're sanding or spraying any products, anything that has fumes um, or dust, you need to wear a mask. Um, we are going to wet sand, and I'm going to show you how I do that. And so you're going to need a spray bottle with um, water, and you're going to need a rag for wiping. All right, so. Let me put my mask on and then we'll get started. Okay, so this is what I do. I'm going to spray it down. I'm going to spray a little bit on at a time. Oops. Okay, and where it's wet, you're just going to take in lightly and I mean lightly. You don't want to scuff the um, glitter because you can scuff the glitter very easily. So you're going to go very lightly. And you're not going to put a lot of pressure. And you're going to go over the top. You're just going to lightly sand. You know, lightly wet sand over the top, just like this. And I wet sand because it gives it, uh, it keeps the dust down, but I still wear a mask. 
and I think it helps to keep things so you don't uh, go too hard. You're just, I'm not even, there's no pressure. I'm just going over the surface. And, um, I'm just going over the surface of the glitter. And really, it's not the glitter I'm sanding down. It's the extreme protection I'm sanding down so that eventually I can get to a smooth, put that there, I can get to a smoother surface. And you have to do this with epoxy as well, the sanding um, to get any lumps and bumps out. That's kind of what you're doing with this as well. Okay. I've pretty much, now it ain't, it is not going to be smooth your first time. It, it, it's just not. And make sure you get the butt. Make sure you sand the butt. And you get along these edges. And that's it. I know it sounds like I'm doing it rough, and I'm not. If there's something like a really big lump, I might go over it just a smidge, but I I don't feel it. And it's still gonna be bumpy. It's still bumpy. And then what I do is I spray it all over because I wanna get all those dust particles off there, and I'm gonna wipe it down really good. And I'm gonna spray it again. I wanna get all these dust particles off wipe off my area and just for a few seconds we're gonna we're gonna let this dry it's gotta we're gonna let it dry for a minute and I'm gonna put this on my turner and I'm gonna move my turner forward and I'm gonna go over <clears throat> we're done with those and the next thing we're going to use is our bright tone and this is bright tone right here it is a top coat it's a it's a gloss glossy top coat and this will bring oh some great shine and you'll start filling in and you're gonna do you probably will do five more coats but for every couple of coats you're gonna do a light sanding so you're gonna put a couple of coats on this and then you're gonna come back with your 400 grit sandpaper and your water and your rag and you're gonna do another light sanding and then you're gonna put a couple more coats on and you're gonna do until you get that glossy smooth finish that you're wanting, that you're wanting to look for. Till you are satisfied, it, it may take you a little more coats. But this, and then these brushes, these brushes here, I think they're something golden. I'll have them linked in the bottom. Um, I get them on Amazon. They come in a pack of three, I think, maybe two. I'm not sure. Anyway, you're going to want some of these because it, you know, make your life a lot easier. They don't leave uh, bubbles. They're a great brush to have. Okay, so this is pretty dry now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put on my bright tones. All right, here we go. And this is how I do it. Let's turn on our turner. You do not want to keep going over and over and over. It's not like epoxy. You do not want to do this. Once you get to this stage where you're using your bright tone, you want to put it on on a thin layer, a very thin layer. You're going to do a thin layer and you're going to go once around. If you miss a spot, leave it. You can get it the next go round. So you're going to put on a thin layer and um, leave it and leave it to turn. So here we go. I put a strip and I brush it on. I put another little strip and I lightly, do not mash this down. You don't have to mash it down. Put on another light strip and this is all you're going to do. You're going to go all the way around it. Try and remember where you left off. A lot of times you can see. Okay, 
I've gone all the way around. Now I want to get the butt, and the butt's hard to get, so I just put a little on the brush, and I just do that. Leave it. Do not touch it. I know you're going to want to. Don't touch it. Let it turn. You're going to let this turn for, um, you're going to let it turn for about 40 minutes, maybe 45, until it's dry. And then you're going to put it on the drying rack, and you're going to let it dry for three to four hours. And then every three to four hours, you're going to be able to come and put another light coat on. And this is self-leveling. That's why you got to allow it to turn. So you're going to put another light coat on. And for every couple, uh, every two, three coats, you're going to do another light sanding to get the lumps out, to get it smooth. And you're going to go light, and I mean light. Okay? So we're going to do this, and I'm going to come back. Um, I'm going to do my couple coats, and I'm going to come back after that, and I'm going to show you, and we're going to light sand it again. Hello, everybody. We're back. I have put, I don't know if you can see, that's a great shine, isn't it? Um, I have put two coats of BT on this and we're ready to sand again. And we're just going to do a light sanding. We're just trying to get this to a point where this is smoother and just glossy and smooth. So again, put on your mask if you're going to do any sanding, spraying, or work with any chemicals. Um, if you're working with epoxy, please put on your respirator mask. Okay, here we go. Now I do the wet sanding and so what we're going to do is we're going to just put some water on this, 400 grit sandpaper, and we're just lightly sanding. Okay, and don't forget the butt. Just know I am putting no pressure on this. I'm just lightly using the paper to just kind of, the sandpaper to just go over it to knock off some of these um, bumps to knock them down and then we're going to fill them with BT. Alright, now that we've sanded, we've got to wash it off, get all that dust and any other particles off this, just spray it down and use your rag to wipe your cup. And your cup is going to look a little scuffy, but we did not scuff the glitter but we did scuff the product. All right, let me take my mask off. Okay, so we did scuff it a little bit. I don't know if you can see, there are some spots that it looks duller. And all we're gonna do now is where we, you let it dry just for a, a minute. And then next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add, we're gonna add more BT. And we're going to do two, three more coats, and we're going to see where we are with the, uh, how smooth it is, how glossy. So we're going to, we're going to go ahead and um, get our brush, and we're going to turn our turner on. 
and we'll get our bright tones, which we call BT, that is bright tones. It's actually this product if you forgot. All right, so what we're gonna do, <clears throat> and we're just going to brush on light coats We're gonna go all the way around. I'm about there. We don't wanna keep going over the same spots. So then I put a little bit on there and I go ahead and I get those edges in the butt. Oops, I did miss a spot. There we go. Okay, and that's all you do. And you leave it to turn. It will self level like I said. And um, we're gonna let that dry we're gonna let it turn for about 40, 45 minutes, and then we're going to uh, let it dry for three hours, and then we'll put another coat on. And we'll see where we are. It is already starting to smooth, and, uh, and that's three coats of BT so far. I probably will get to one more sanding and a couple more after that. All right, I'll see you after that. Okay, everybody, we're back, and we're back to do our um, next sanding. It is starting to get really smoother and smoother. I think this sanding might be the last one. Um, sometimes you need to do three sandings. Okay, what I wanted to show you, I had forgotten to show you. We had put electrical tape around this when we prepped the cup. And I normally, when I start my bright tones, I take the electrical tape off and I put painter's tape on. And I leave a little lit, a little space, just a, just a little, um, so that um, it can come up over and form a seal around all that. And then this is easy to take up after you finish your bright tone. So it, you just put it on. It's, it's just really easy. You just put it on and leave that little space and tuck everything in and that protects your edges. Okay, so we're going to sand. Um, i got to put my mask on. Some people dry sand. I prefer wet sanding, as you found out. And so we're going to do a light sanding. Remember, light touch light touch we do not need to mash down if you mash and press and um go over it way too long you're gonna scuff your beautiful glitter and and we don't want that i don't want you scuffing your glitter so i think i need to adjust my camera just a little there we go there Let me move this out. There we go. That gives me a little more room. But just, it's a light touch. I'm barely, I'm, there's no pressure. I need a little more water though. And I'm just lightly going over it to get some of these bumps off to get to a smoother surface. Some have a different way of doing this. Um, this is the only way that has helped me. You'll see a little film, and that film is, is from the sanding. It is from the product. So just we, we will be wiping that film off. But do not scuff your glitter. Just go very light-handedly. You will feel spots that need, <clears throat> sorry, feel spots that need a little bit of um, extra sanding. We may find that, you know, we do two more coats and we need to do one more light sanding and two more extra coats. And that's okay. It seems like a lot, but it really isn't. Because every three to four hours you're putting a coat on. Unless you're flood coating and then it's five to six. Okay, we got our sanding. 
we got our sanding on this part and we got to get the butt of it and get these edges just to make sure we do a little sanding around these edges just to knock down those little lumps because our, our goal is to get it to where it is a smooth, shiny surface. Let's see, I felt a spot right in here. There we go. And you'll be able to feel them. <clears throat> now we're going to get the butt of it. We do not want to scuff. So we're just going to lightly go over this. All right, we don't want to too much. And that's it. Now we're gonna spray it. We're gonna spray it down really good. We're gonna get all that film, all that dusting film off. I normally do it a couple times. Whoops. <laughs> Turn my rag around and get all this film off. Just wipe it really good. And then we're going to let it dry just for a few seconds. We're going to let it dry just for a little bit. And I want to talk about some other things. Um, like my gloves, I use my gloves over and over. They will last me a week. That's the great thing about the the bright tone is I just wash my gloves off so they last me a lot longer I don't like wasting things as you can see from our um, products and what we represent we represent um, eco-friendly products as much as we can we use the bags instead of the bottles because um, the bags allow you to refill the bottles and our bags are eco-friendly biodegradable and it's a slow biodegradable, so it's going to take a long time. However, they are more eco-friendly to our environment, and we're not throwing more and more plastic out there. And so that's why we chose the bags over the bottles. We do sell the bottles, and that way you can refill your bottles instead of throwing them away. Um, I do a lot of experimenting with um, UV resin and bright tones, crystal light bright tones and such as this this is a bezel that is done with my precious which is a chunky holographic gold and it's done with the bright tone crystal light product and i'm probably going to put something on this and yes it does have to cure um this is done with a um epoxy free product and i'm going to be showing this um, showing these on on our group um, the Frazzle Flamingo epoxy free tumblers and crafts and I'll be showing this this is so exciting and these are buttons we will be giving away on our site um, for rewards and then this is this is a UV resin uh, so um, I do a lot of experimenting. Okay, now we're gonna, it, it has dried, and now we are going to put another coat of our bright tones on. And it will look a little, it will look a little scuffed up, and you're gonna go, oh my gosh, I ruined my cup. Um, if you wanna see, hold on, let me see if we can't, I can't show you. I don't know if you can see it, but it has a little dullness, a little, looks like scuffy, but I have not scuffed the glitter, but that's normal. That's from sanding, and it will pop back up as soon as we put the bright tones on. So, all right, so let's get our bright tones on so we can get this beautiful glitter shining again. We just, like I said, it's a light, light hand. We're not going to mash, and, you, and if you are dipping, do not dip and scrape. If you dip and scrape, you're going to create bubbles. So just dip and then put it on. Dip and put it on. I find you have less you know, waste with this. So I don't know where I left off. So that's okay. We're going to put this on. It's already coming back. And you just drip, do some drips on it. 
Yep, that's a spot I already got. There we go. Now we're back where we were. And we're going to just drip it across. When you sand it too, you can really tell where you left off. All right. Now we need to get the, don't forget the butt. And I just put a little cross there and spread it on. Make sure I get my edges. And there we have it. The bottom's done. And leave it. And it is already, I think it'll take just one more coat and I think we'll be there. Now, I'll be back to show you the end result. Okay, everybody, I'm back. Um, I have now finished my cup. I've reached the point now, as you can see, it's got this really great shine. Just about all the bumps are out of it. There are still a few. However, you've reached the point where you can put your um, vinyl decal on it or any of your water slides. It's smooth enough for any of that. And then once you do that, you're going to put a few more coats on that. So total we have, we what we did is we prepped our cup. We used our, um, our, our white walkers, sorry, um, glitter. And we put over a prepped um, ombre sprayed cup. Then we sealed it with E6000. And like I said, you can spray it or you can brush it on. Then we did five flood coats of the Extreme Protection, the EP. And then we sanded it very lightly with 400 grit sandpaper. And then we put on two coats of Bright Tone with our brush, very lightly, one. Do not go over and over. Don't dip and scrape. Just put it on very lightly. And we put two coats, then we sand it very lightly again, and we've put on two more coats. And now it's at the point where you can put on your decal, uh, your vinyl, a decal sticker, water slides, it's smooth enough for any of that. And then you will start putting on a few coats to cover up your vinyl and your decal. You may need probably another three coats maybe four. So total, we have nine coats on this. We have four of EP, I mean, five of EP, excuse me, and four of BT, which is bright tone. And then you put your sticker decal, you'll do a few more coats, and you'll let it dry. And that's how you glitter a cup with Crystal Act products. All right, till next time. I do hope that we have inspired y'all to... Just be your wonderfully creative self. Have a fantastic day.